I very well may be done with the CFA exams forever. So I took the level three test two weeks ago now. It's Saturday morning, end of June today. And I just kind of want to talk about the experience, how I thought the final prep went, how I thought the exam went, and what it might mean looking forward. So in my other videos, I've talked about my the majority of my study process, basically from November until April. Um, and obviously, mock exams are a really important part of CFA exam preparation. So for level three, it's especially important to get a lot of AM session done. And if you're not familiar with it, level three AM or, or the morning session is essay. Uh, type questions. They're not really essays. The Institute just calls it the essay session. Uh, they're more like short answer. You kind of make bullet points or dashes uh, and you circle certain answers that you think uh, might be right and then give a couple bullet points about why. It's especially important to take mock exams for level three because the timing is really difficult. It is really hard more than any other session um, to get done in the allotted three hour time period for the uh, level three morning session. One of the things I did was the full-timed mock exam offered by Kaplan Swesher. Uh, my study material was through Wiley, so I got invited to do that program through my local CFA uh, society. And I thought that was a really good experience, number one, because I hadn't seen any Kaplan practice questions. They had all been Wiley and CFA practice questions. And also, it put me, it, it required me to practice the timing of that. So it was free for me. I know it's offered all over the place from Kaplan on usually about two weeks before the real exam and sometimes you have to pay 20 bucks to do it. I would recommend almost anyone do that, especially for level three, primarily to practice the timing of the morning section. In that mock exam, I finished the morning section with two minutes remaining. So in two hours and 58 minutes and I kind of started to look back over the first question but there really wasn't any time to review it totally. And my timing was just, just about spot on. I think I did a really good job in it. And so that mock exam was uh, good for building confidence, if, if nothing else. Obviously, if you went too fast, you could know that now you're able to slow down. And some people actually might do all this timing practice in their regular mock exams. I didn't use the past CFA exams or the Wiley mock exams exactly in that context. I kind of use them more for practice than anything else. I'd practice timing on individual item sets in level 3 AM. There's 10 item sets or 10 questions, but um, I never did the whole thing. So I don't know if that's bad or good. A lot of people would tell you that you should be doing the whole thing in the time three hour time period a lot more than I did it. And maybe it'll come back to bite me in the butt, but um, I did finish the timing all right on the, on the actual exam. So on the actual exam, I got done with about 15 minutes maybe 12 minutes left and I went back through and reviewed probably three questions. I, I know I added one sentence to one of my answers to clarify a little bit. I don't know if that was bad or good, but um, I think practicing the timing in that Kaplan uh, free simulated mock exam is a, is a good experience and it worked out for me well. For mocks in, in general, I took 16, which is more than most, but I just wanted to feel, feel way over prepared and I didn't feel over prepared. I felt probably ad adequately prepared. I thought the real exam was difficult for sure. And I know a lot of other people on the forums thought so as well. So I don't think doing 16 was overkill. Um, I think 20 wouldn't be overkill either. 20 might be right. I did two Wileys, one Kaplan, two from FinQuiz that they offered for free and then 12 of the past year's CFA uh, released morning sessions and then I combined the CFA uh, topic tests which are now called practice questions on their website to simulate the PM section so of those 16 mocks one I duplicated I think I did the 2010 exam twice or something like that but um, I wanted to make sure I had an adequate amount of practice. So going in on exam day, I felt really good. I'm going to include a clip here of just a, a little video I made in the car. June 15th, 7.20 a.m. On the way to do the thing. Just ran through all the formulas again. Got them all right. Uh, much ahead on the formulas than I was for level two. They're less important for this year, but I'm good for the other stuff too. The long answer, individual investors, behavioral, stuff like that. It's been a long nine months. I can't wait to do this. Yeah, so we're going to get there about 7.40. I can't check in until 8, so I'm going to walk around for 20 minutes or whatever. Uh, I'm checking at 8. They start talking at 8.30. Test starts at 9. I bought a wristwatch yesterday. 
definitely need to be able to tell the time during the thing. Let's see what time it is. 7.20. Good. Woo! Doing it. I mentioned a couple things in there. I felt really good to take the test, which I did. I also mentioned I had the formulas memorized, which I've talked about in other videos. I think memorizing all of the relevant formulas for your year uh, is a really important thing to do in the two or three days before the exam. I did it on a Wednesday and Thursday, and I took Friday off, and then Saturday was the test, obviously. So I did that a little differently than I had in the past. For level one, I did it just on Thursday. For level two, I did it just on Thursday, but I didn't finish in time. It was like I started at 7 a.m., and it was like 11 p.m., and I still had a few more to go through. So I ended up having to study for about two hours on Friday, which I didn't want to do the day before the exam. So for level three, an equal amount of formulas to memorize as level two. So I did it Wednesday and Thursday, I split it up into two days, and I think that worked out really well for me. In the level three exam, formulas are a little less important. And what I mean by that is a lot more of the questions are qualitative. And so they, you know, if you've taken a level three exam, you'll know what I mean. But things about... Um, portfolio management for personal investors for institutions and behavioral finance topics. There's a lot of ethics and then there's uh, GIPs. And so all those things you don't need formulas for. So I think you use formulas less on level three than levels one and two, but you still need to have them all down pat because you're going to have to answer some questions with them. So make sure to spend some days doing that before the exam. And I think the days I spent before the exam went really well. So I was just excited going into it. On test day, I was able to get everything done in time. I like to take, get up and uh, get a, go to the drinking fountain and, and bathroom halfway through the sessions. I've done that for level one and two, the real exams. So I told myself going into it, okay, knowing that level three AM section is the most time intensive, I want to be nine minutes ahead of schedule. If I'm nine minutes ahead of schedule, I'll get up and I'll do my drink and bathroom break and whatever halfway through. So I plotted out the 10 questions. Each one in level three tells you how many minutes you're supposed to allocate to that question. So after like the fifth question, it was supposed to be like um, 10, 42 a.m. or something. And when I got done with the fifth question, it was 10, 34. So I was eight minutes ahead of schedule, not nine. So I said, all right, I didn't hit my rule. I don't know why I picked nine really, but it worked out. So I ended up finishing ahead again, but I'm glad that I did not get up to take that extra time. Otherwise, I would have felt really rushed on like seven and eight. And uh, let's see, seven and eight took me a long time. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean to say. So it kind of came down to the wire. I underlined a, a, a sentence when I finished my last answer on the ones I reviewed right when she was saying, you know, stop writing now. So I was glad to get it all done. And I know a couple of people around me did not get it all done. But I think it went pretty well. We'll see how the results go. It was definitely difficult. There was one major section that I was pretty confident was going to be tested on, and I spent a ton of time practicing in the weeks before, and it just was not anywhere on the test, so that was a bummer. But some of my stronger areas were on the test as well, so uh, I thought it was a difficult exam, but uh, I was really glad to do it. I was really excited to get to apply what I've been studying for nine months and maybe also three years because it's kind of cumulative. You know, it's kind of like if you're playing basketball or whatever and instead of having a season where you have a game twice a week and practices the other days, you have practice every day for nine months or a year, and then there's one game at the end of it. You know, So you, there's just so much anticipation for game day, and I was really excited to, to go out there and be able to take the test. Level 3 p.m. section is just like level 2 a.m. and p.m. Uh, item sets. And I finished with about a half hour left, so I went back through and reviewed those. It was a little bit easier than the AM, but still difficult. The ethics section was really tough. They just throw a ton of curveballs in there that you never see when you are going through the actual ethics material, either from the uh, CFA Institute's text or the Kaplan or Wiley material. So they make it really difficult. Otherwise, I think everyone would get 80%, 90% on ethics. So I was happy how the test shook out. Uh, it's been two weeks since then. I'm not really too worried about what the results were. I know a lot of people freak out about it a lot on the forums and post it almost every day about how anxious they are. I don't really feel that way, kind of in general, about life in general. So it you know applies to this test as well. I'm just going to wait to see when they come out. Hopefully I passed. I really think it's about 50-50. Um, probably 60% chance of passing, 40% chance of failing. I could see it going either way, but I feel a little bit better about it. I don't feel that good about it, but I just know that I prepared so much that there's got to be a better chance that I pass than, I, than I'm than i thinking. So I would say 60-40% odds. 
but I've really enjoyed the last two weeks. I'm getting a lot of other things done and I'm excited to be moving on with my life, maybe not having to take any of these tests ever again in the future. So congrats to everyone else who finished any of the levels or especially if you finished level three and think you might have did a good job. It's uh, the end of June. Let's enjoy these next four or five months before we get back into it, folks.